Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the fourth and final lecture of Chapter 8. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, the idea of these problems is to use conservation of energy in the first two, and in the third one, you'll use that as well as conservation of momentum. So these are problems we've already seen, the first two, not the third. So this is a projectile problem in three dimensions, but the um, particle constant mass m is launched with a speed v naught at an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal. And we can take that to be the yz plane. We discussed this earlier. Okay, now using conservation of energy, I want you to compute the maximum height reached and the position vector at any time. And you saw how to use this when the particle in, in the examples in this chapter, when the particle is moving along a line, just straight up and straight down, here it's moving in a plane. So in the, in the straight up, straight down problem, the maximum height reached was when the velocity, z velocity, was zero. Okay, now velocity in this case has, is a vector. It has two components, the z velocity component and the y velocity component. So you, you still have the same condition, but you just want the z velocity component to, to be zero. That's when it goes up along the parabola and then starts coming down. The y component of velocity doesn't change in time, right? Because of there's no force acting in the y direction. And then you're going to have to do a little integration once you get part a to get the position vector at any time, like in... Uh, the example in the chapter. Okay, problem two. We've seen this inclined plane problem. The only force acting is gravity. And if you use the um, coordinates along the plane and normal to the plane, it, it is a one-dimensional motion type problem, and you can use the same ideas of conservation of energy. At the top, it's all potential no kinetic at the bottom. It's all kinetic, no potential energies, that is. And that one comes easy from energy, and this you may have to do, you will have to do a little integration. All right, now, problem three is different than we've ever seen so far in the course because it involves two particles. Everything is just one particle for, that we've looked at so far, but we're going to use conservation of momentum. The total momentum, so these particles are going to collide and the total momentum before the collision is going to be equal to the total momentum after, conservation of momentum, and we're going to consider something called an elastic collision, which by definition means the kinetic energy of each particle before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy of each particle after the collision. And using these relations, you should be able to solve the problem and answer the questions that are, that are posed for you, to you about finding velocities before and after the collision. So this problem is a little algebraically a bit more intensive than any problem we've looked at, but it's a very interesting problem. You, all, you also may want to think a little bit about Newton's third law and if this plays any role in this particular collision problem. Okay, that's it for Chapter 8. In Chapter 9, 
we're going to learn about the phase plane for one dimensional motion under the action of a conservative force. So that's it for now. See you next time.